This is our second stop, and we're sitting here on the banks of the river Ganges, very close to where she appeared. This is Gango Tree. There's a beautiful temple here. There's guest houses for the pilgrims. There's full facility for taking Ganges water, drinking it, and bathing it because she's very pure here. But her actual appearance is about 17 kilometers north of here. It's actually where she descended from the heavenly planets. Uh, to, to Mother Earth. It's a bit of an arduous journey. We don't have the time uh, this visit to, to go there. I know many devotees have, but this is good enough in the sense that we're sitting by her, her sacred waters. Um, the history of Mother Ganges coming from the spiritual world, because she comes from the spiritual world. As we mentioned earlier, many transcendental personalities and items and things come from the spiritual world for the purification of mankind. Narottam Das Thakur talks about sound coming from the spiritual world. He says, Golok Prem Don Harinam Sankirtan, that the Sankirtan movement of chanting the holy names has come from the spiritual world, especially in the stage to purify people. So Mother Ganges also came from that transcendental abode. Um, first of all, uh, we read in Srimad Bhagavatam the pastimes of Bali Maharaj. Bali Maharaj was such a powerful king that it conquered the universe. He conquered the 14 worlds to the degree that everyone was a little nervous. <laughs> but to make him a little humble, the Lord appeared as Vamanadev. And Lord Vamanadev, you could say some transcendental trickery, he asked Bali Maharaj, as a young boy, could you please just give me three steps of land? So Bali Maharaj is thinking, oh, little child, three steps of land. But Krishna is Yogeshwara. And as uh, Vamanadev, he expanded himself. He took three steps. And one of those first steps was his legs extended all the way up, up, up to the spiritual world. And there with his toe, he poked a hole in the spiritual world. It's all a pastime for our, our benefit and the benefit of anyone who comes in contact with um, spiritual life, as we know in Vedic culture. So that water trickled and continues to trickle till the end of time into the material world. And it's considered the Charnamrita of the Lord. People in India know that. Not just the intelligent Brahmanas, but India is an amazing place. Even the quote-unquote common person, uh, he knows he's not the body. He knows there's life after death. He knows there's a better chance if he acts in a spiritual way to improve himself and go back to the spiritual world. So people know the benefit of touching Mother Ganges, praying to Mother Ganges, begging for the mercy of Mother Ganges. And therefore, people live on the banks of Mother Ganges. All throughout India, as she flows from the Himalayas down to the Bay of Bengal, 
people are living on her banks knowing that by bathing in her sins wash away just like dirt washes from the body we have in our prayers cheto darpan and marjana by chanting the names of the lord or by bathing in mother ganges the sinful reactions in our heart flow to a distant place and in that healthy atmosphere in the heart we can awaken our love for god this morning we mentioned that uh, the Jumuna River is considered a little more special in the sense that Krishna bathed as a young baby there. Therefore, the Acharyas say that one can get more than uh, freedom from karma and freedom from material desires. By bathing in the Jamuna, one can get love of God. However, Srila Vindavan Das Thakur, in order to glorify Mother Ganges, the supreme celestial river, he writes, we must consider how, as Krishna bathed in the Jamuna River, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu bathed in Mother Ganges in Bengal and Navadweep. The same situation. There's no difference between Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Radha and Krishna. Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Radha Krishna Nayanga. The two became one in the personality, the divine personality, the golden avatar, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So let us think like that, that by bathing in Mother Ganges, as Mahaprabhu did, we can achieve prema, we can achieve love of God. Therefore, we are so grateful to come here. We owe everything to our founder, Acharya, of the Hare Krishna movement, His Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, for introducing us into all these transcendental phenomena, the chanting of the holy names, dancing in ecstasy, taking prasadam, reading Shastra, and the opportunity to do as so many of our Acharyas have done, come to these holy places and actually become uh, purified. Ganges uh, flowed from the spiritual world by the mercy of Dev. She actually came as far as the heavenly planets. And she was coming in so powerful because spirit is more powerful than matter. So this transcendental water is flowing into the material world, into the heavenly planets. And it's so powerful. So then how did she come to the earthly realm? Or for that matter, how did she come to the lower planets because we know Mother Ganges is so kind. She even flows in the nether worlds for the benefits of those fallen conditioned souls. Well, that history is very prominent here at Gungotri, this village of Gungotri. And that is that uh, King uh, Bhagirath, his, some of his ancestors, ancestors had offended Gravasamuni. And that created a great, a very chaotic scene within that dynasty. So to relieve the, uh, his forefathers from the sins of 
ascending a Vaishnava uh, of the caliber of Devasamuni, King Bhagirat, he came here to this exact spot, just uh, maybe 50 meters away, and he sat in meditation, and he prayed, and he prayed, and he prayed, and he begged, and he begged, and he begged, and he supplemented, as we do when we're chanting Hare Krishna. This is the mood, you have to be very intense to get spiritual mercy. He prayed for Mother Ganges to come from the heavenly abodes to the earthly abode here to purify the ashes of his ancestors. 5,500 years he sat there in meditation. So when King Bhagirath, uh, by his kindness, prayed to Mother Ganges to come here, she came, but the, the people uh, of the earth were very much afraid, the sadhus were very much afraid that the force of the Ganges would destroy the earth planet, everything below it. So, uh, out of his kindness, out of his mercy, Lord Shiva appeared and he caught the full force of Mother Ganges in his hair. And this way everyone was saved. Although she came to give mercy, she was so powerful, uh, she might destroy. So, Lord Shiva caught her in his hair. And when you see a picture of Lord Shiva, you, see, you can see that the Ganges is flowing into her hair or sometimes she's represented by her deity form, um, Mother Ganges, there in the hair of Lord Shiva, where he caught her. So we've come here as beggars, as well, the top piece of the sannyasi, this yatri. This is traditionally meant for begging, for foodstuffs, madhukari, a, a Gaudiya Vaishnava sannyasi living in a holy place, because he's spending so much time shravanam, kirtanam, krishna shmaranam, um, he, he needs to eat, so he goes to four houses and he begs with this yatri, with this. So here, um, we've come to beg for the mercy of Mother Ganga, this great transcendental personality who's flowed from the spiritual sky through the heavenly planets to this earthly realm and even lower to give her mercy in a very simple way. This is how nice transcendence is, especially in Vedic culture. It can be achieved in a simple way if one is honest. Just bathe in her waters, pray to her, drink the water, cook with the water, associate with her. In this way she will give her much to her. So this is why we've come here. Our second stop on our pilgrimage to the, to the Char Dham. We wish that all of you could come with us. We feel so spiritually exhilarated here, so spiritually excited, so we can't sleep at night. <laughs> it's just so transcendentally enlivening here. We hope that one day you can come and also sit in the bank of the Ganges. If not, there is a prayer in our prayer, Iskand prayer book that you can call the Ganges, and the Saraswati, and the Jamuna, the Godavari rivers into your Ajman cup by mantra, and you can take her mercy in that way. If not, you simply pray to her. She's very, very important in our Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition, and um, we will be leaving tomorrow uh, for Kedarnath, the place of Lord Shiva, and we'll continue our discussions there, and we'll finish with, with uh, Badrinath. Shri Gangama Ki, Shri Chardam Ki, Himalayan Mountains Ki, Sisi Radha Krishna Ki, Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Ki, Go Premanandi, J J C Radhe Shanti.